Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, wheelers, your shells, death slayers, peasants, vassals, minions, wife beaters, husband beaters. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today, I uh, pose the question, who's better at beating up their wives and girlfriends, NFL players or cops? And uh, I know that's kind of a provocative question, and uh, undoubtedly I'm going to get some uh, interesting comments. But uh, it's a very fair question to ask, because we live in an era of... Uh, selective outrage and that's how propaganda works that's how media works and that's how the public works because that's what propaganda and media has done to them we now have selective outrage and a good example of this is uh, all the recent uproar uh, over Ray Rice and this domestic uh, violence case and uh, anyone that's seen the, the video of course is, is going to be very very shocked and it is a, a shocking video and uh, I by no means uh, or any stretch of the imagination uh, condone that activity. Although I do tend to agree with uh, some pundits, including uh, notably the Amazing Atheist, and I'll attach his video below that in a lot of respects, uh, it's between the, the, the couple themselves, particularly in this case where the, the, the girlfriend and or slash fiance wife um, is not interested in pressing charges and now her, uh, her uh, fiancé slash husband's uh, life and career is now uh, completely decimated. And uh, so in a lot of ways, uh, it seems like it should be uh, an issue between the husband and wife. Certainly when the wife beats the husband, it's a, an issue in the family. And it's usually not publicly exposed. But uh, that's just the nature of this, this uh, issue. But... Uh, so now Ray Rice, uh, interestingly, uh, immediately fired, will never work in the NFL again, and now an entire hierarchy of, of heads may roll. Uh, people that were overseeing this, people who covered up for him, uh, there could be a lot more people fired over this. And, uh, and uh, one of the figures uh, that I dug up was that only 84, and I don't mean to downplay this by saying only, but you'll see what I mean when I get to the police, only 84 NFL players have been arrested and accused of domestic violence since 2000. So uh, the last 14 years. So considering the number of uh, players in the NFL and in, in, in all these clubs, um, it's a fairly small number. But now, uh, because of the whole high profile, the selective outrage and the propaganda, we're now having a massive national dialogue. And, uh, and everybody in the NFL is being held accountable. And, uh, and, and we're once again being shown that uh, these uh, football players are role models and therefore they, they have to live up to higher standards. So now let's move to the police and their domestic violence because uh, it's a far more diabolical, far worse situation. And there is no not national dialogue. There are no heads rolling. Uh, there is no reexamination going on. So with police violence, uh, studies have indicated that uh, domestic violence in police fam families is two to four times higher than the na national average. Say that uh, around 10% of uh, U.S. families experience some sort of domestic violence, whether the uh, husband uh, beating the wife or the wife beating the husband. And actual figures show that uh, domestic violence is about equal, contrary to the popular mythology and propaganda out there. Uh, domestic violence is about equal. It just uh, seems like a preponderance of male violence because they, they are more capable of actually inflicting uh, physical damage. But uh, as it turns out, in police families, 40%, 40% of police families experience domestic violence. And, uh, and it has a number of troubling aspects. And I'll, uh, I'll put the data that I'm condensing down to very simplistic forms uh, down below, especially involving uh, this police violence. It's very fascinating to see what kind of uh, hurdles that uh, victims of domestic violence and police families uh, have their particular uh, hurdles that they have to deal with. Um, but victims obviously are particularly vulnerable because they're dealing with somebody who's trained to intimidate, trained to inflict violence, trained with a gun. Uh, they also have a, a police culture that protects them. And uh, they also have um, uh, the police themselves, of course, 
the know how to manipulate the system and also know how to manipulate the victim. And uh, the, the victim, of course, has uh, very few options of places to go because she can't go to the police, for example. And uh, the police also use their authority and credibility in legal cases uh, when these court, uh, cases are rarely brought to court, which is all the more uh, ironic in this day and age when we find uh, uh, documented cases of police lying in uh, event after event after event across the country. Uh, so why the police now come to represent a, a pillar of authority and credibility and veracity when they have a documented history of lying across the entire nation um, is a, a whole another topic for a whole another video. And then uh, another hurdle that uh, domestic violence victims and, and police families have to deal with is the, the case is not confidential. If they do bring it to the police, then, then there's no way that case will remain confidential. And the chances are that the perpetrator will find out from the, um, his or her comrades uh, that this case has been filed and will probably make things worse. And uh, there's also a study done in 1994, and they found out that 45% of police departments don't even have an internal policy to deal with domestic violence in, in police uh, cases. So once again, I hold up the fact that uh, they, they're talking about all the, uh, the systems they need in place in the NFL uh, to check uh, domestic violence in the NFL. We've had 84 cases of domestic violence since 2000, documented cases, I should point out. But uh, in the case of 45% police departments, they have no internal policy. And that seems like it should be uh, 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 an issue to be addressed. And one of the reasons, uh, between uh, 1990 and 1997, a, a good example, just one police department, the LAPD, Los Angeles Police Department, in that, that seven years, they investigated 227 cases of domestic violence in police families. They only found... 91 cases that they sustained. And that doesn't disqualify the other cases, it just means that the, the 91 were so bad they couldn't ignore them. And out of those 91 cases, only four officers were con convicted. So out of 227 cases of domestic violence, only four officers were con convicted. And one of them, his punishment was, uh, he was suspended for two weeks. A lot different from uh, Ray Rice having his entire career ended. And, uh, interestingly enough, 26 of those officers were promoted and uh, three quarters of the abuse wasn't even put on these policemen's records. So that's how, how good it is. That's how insulated the police departments are as far as dom domestic violence is, is, is concerned. They can just one uh, LAPD in a seven year period had 227 cases, 91 cases went to court, four officers were convicted um, and they generally just get counseling, and it doesn't even go on their records, and 26 of those officers were promoted. And a good example of that, and one of the reasons why I brought this uh, story up in the first place is because I saw the Ray Rice video, and I saw everything that happened to him, and all this national discussion, of this national dialogue, and, and all this outcry, and uh, like I say, there will be an entire hierarchy um, whose heads will roll, and, uh, and, this, and uh, these systems will be revamped, and uh, there will be these new internal policies developed. But uh, and, and a couple weeks after that, a uh, video which I'll attach below, we have a Honolulu police officer, 18-year veteran, who was recently promoted to sergeant, even though he had a history of domestic violence. And we have a video of him viciously beating his girlfriend in a restaurant in after hours, a restaurant she worked in. And the responding officers uh, didn't arrest him, so now they're under investigation. And um, not only that, but there's not none of the hierarchy of officers, uh, his commanding officers, anybody else that hasn't instigated an, an internal program, uh, they're not going to be fired, unlike uh, people involved in the Ray Rice case. Uh, in fact, this Honolulu, Honolulu police officer has a history of domestic violence. His ex-wife said he threatened to kill her if she called the police on him, and she did call the cops, and she filed three cases against him between 2002 and 2009. And yet he was still promoted to sergeant, and the entire uh, command structure at the Honolulu Police Office was untrampered with, and probably they're part of one of those 45% of police departments that don't even have an internal policy to deal with this. 
So I don't know about you, but uh, I I'd, I'd be more concerned um, about the domestic violence of the police forces, those who are supposed to serve and protect American citizens. I'd be more concerned about that than the private lives of uh, media stars and football players. We have police out on the street every day. And uh, unlike police officers, uh, I mean, unlike uh, football players, police officers have guns, tasers, tanks, shotguns, armor, and all the rest that goes with that. So uh, we have an ill-tempered police out there who beat their wives, who are then uh, sent out to uh, so-called protect and serve the public uh, with this arsenal. And uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't know about you. So uh, here we go. More selective outrage. Uh, when's the national dialogue going to start about domestic abuse amongst police officers? Uh, and, and, and that's just a start. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.